Okay, so in today's video we're going to have a look at some inverse proportion in context and this is one of those topics that for some reason just seems to throw people when they read the wording and, and, and the idea of how they actually go about answering this type of question. Uh, but grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, we've got a few to have a go at here. So this first one is 10 workers take 4 days to complete a job, how long will 8 workers take to complete the same job? Now logically we've got less workers so it's going to take more time. And what people are quite tempted to do here is to say okay well 10 workers four days, divide it by four, working out one day, and then times in it by eight, and that's completely wrong, because that's gonna give us a, a much lower number there um, than the four days. And logically, if we've got less workers, it's gonna take more days, unless, of course, those workers are more highly skilled, and, and they happen to take more, um, um, obviously less days. Um, but we're gonna assume that it's the same type of workers here, and we're gonna talk about these assumptions as well in a sec. But having a look at this question here, we've got 10 workers take four days, now if we imagine, and this is always the case, we've got to think, all right, well if 10 workers take four days, how long would one worker take? Okay, and one worker would take 10 times longer, we would assume, okay, then obviously having 10. Just like if we had one, if we had two workers doing a job, it would take that them twice as long if it was just the one person. Okay, we times it by two. So here, if we've got 10 workers taking four days, it would take 10 times four, 40 days for one worker, okay? And that is how long we would expect one worker to take, okay? 10 workers take four days, so times that by four, four times as long would be 40 days. And that's the first piece of information that we really need to work out here, because that's how long in days it would take one worker to complete this job. Now it says here that we've got eight workers, okay? So we've got more than one worker, we've got the eight workers. And if we've got eight workers, we would assume it would be eight times faster. So if we want to work out eight times faster than 40 days, we can divide that by eight, and 40 divided by eight would give us a total amount of days there of five, so we would have five days to complete the job, okay? So it's inverse proportion. Obviously we have more than four days there, we've got five days, it's taken longer, our answer makes sense. And we just need to think about the logic behind that there. Obviously multiplying it by four, four times as long um, for one worker, but obviously for eight work it would be eight times faster, making that number that 40 days there shorter and down to five. Okay, we are making some assumptions here. We are assuming that all the workers work at the same rate and they have the same skill. And obviously if this wasn't the case, our answer could be bigger, it could be smaller, but we don't know. Obviously more skilled workers, our answer could be smaller there. We could be less days and less skilled workers, our answer could be bigger. It could actually be longer than five days. But let's have a look at another question. Okay, so it takes eight machines six days to complete a job. How long would it take 12 machines to complete the same job? So we're gonna take this in exactly the same way here. We're just gonna think about, okay, well, if eight machines take six days, what would one machine take? Okay, and we're gonna take exactly the same approach there. If eight machines take six days, we would assume one machine would take eight times longer. So the six days, multiply that by eight, and that would give us 48 days in total that we would expect if we turn seven of those machines off and just let one do the job, that it would take 48 days, okay? And that's how many days of work it technically takes there. Even though it's being done in six, that is by eight machines, but actually technically that's 48 days of work, okay? If we think about the electricity costs there, we'd have to be really behave for 48 days worth of electricity than if we were to just run the one machine for the 48 days. Now, same approach here. Here we've got how long would it take 12 machines to take? So we would assume that 12 machi machines are going to be 12 times faster. So to work that out, we'll do the 48 days, we'll divide it by 12, and that'll leave us with four days to complete the job there with these 12 machines. Okay, one more for you to have a go at. Okay, so final question before you have a go. We've got it takes six taps 12 hours to fill up a water tank. How long would it take eight taps to fill up the same water tank? Okay, so it's the same water tank, okay, but we're gonna have obviously more taps here. More taps, again, thinking logically, it's gonna take less time. So if six taps take 12 hours, how long would one tap take? And this is always the thing we need to work out. So if we actually work that out, we've got six times 12, okay, 12 times longer, and that's 72 hours. Okay, I think I might have said days there, but there we go, it's hours, so 72 hours. Now having a look, we've got eight taps, so it's gonna be eight times faster, so 72, 
divided by eight leaves us with nine hours. Make sure I don't write days there. There we go, nine hours. Okay, so it is faster. It's gone from 12 down to nine. Um, obviously with more taps there, it's gonna take less time. So always thinking logically about these, okay? Obviously, if you did take the wrong approach here, and please do avoid this, if you did 12 hours and divided it by six, that would give you two. And then two times eight would give you 16. And that is obviously a longer amount of time. Your answer doesn't make sense there. Because if you've got more taps, it's gonna be less time. And again, we are assuming here that all of the taps run at the same rate. And of course, if they don't, then it may take more, it may take less, okay? Because those extra two taps obviously could run at a faster rate and therefore it could take a lot less time or again they could be quite slow and actually it wouldn't reduce the time uh, that much at all okay but we are making the assumption here that they are they're all the same taps running at the same rate okay here's some views have a go at so pause the video there have a go at these and we'll go over the answers in a sec okay so four workers take nine days to complete a job so four times nine gives us 36 days if it was one worker okay so 36 days it's going to be three workers obviously that we're looking for here so if we divide this by three, we get 12 days. There we go, and again, logically, does that make sense? We have less workers, so it's gonna take longer than nine days, so 12 days does make sense there. Let's have a look at the other one. It takes five taps 16 hours, so one tap will be uh, five times longer. So five times 16 is 80, and that is hours, so 80 hours. How long would it take eight taps? Okay, so divide that by eight, because it's gonna be eight times faster and that leaves us with 10 hours. There you go, and how, there's how to approach some inverse proportion. So I've got some slightly different ones. Okay, so there's a lot more words in this question. It says it takes eight machines, nine days to complete a job. On the first day, three machines are used. On the second day, six machines are used. And for the remaining days, seven machines are used. I just realized that says R's used. There we go, let's get rid of that. It just says, should just say R used. How many days does it take to complete the job? So first things first, we've got this first bit of information here, eight machines and nine days. So we can work out one machine, so eight times nine, gives us 72 days in total for this job to be completed by one machine. Now it says on the first day, three machines are used. So that's three days worth of work there. That's only on one day. Okay, but on that first day, let's just label this on the first day, there's gonna be three days of work done there. Okay, so three days. There we go. So that's one day, but three machines. So in total, that's three of those 72 days that were gonna be done there if it was one machine. It says on the second day, six machines are used. So on the second day, we've got six machines. That's only for one day again. So it's just gonna be six days of work. Again, it could say for two days there, that'd be 12 days, but it's only one day. So six machines, six days of work there. And for the remaining days, seven machines are used. So in total, we've done nine days worth of work there. Okay, the three and the six, nine days of those 72 have been done. So if we take away those nine days, how many actual days do we have left there? And 72, take away nine, leaves us with 63 days of work that needs to be done. Okay, so we have 63 days that need to be done. Right, so it says for the remaining days, seven machines are used, and we've still got 63 days of work to be done technically 63 days, but we are gonna be using seven machines. So it's gonna be seven times faster than if it was just one machine. So let's divide that by seven and 63 divided by seven leaves us with a remaining amount of days there of nine. So there are gonna be nine days done in those remaining days where we have seven machines. Now we've not quite finished the question here because not forgetting we did have the first day where we use three machines, the second day where we use six machines. So nine, add those additional two so add the extra two there from above, would give us in total 11 days that it's gonna to take to do this job. Okay, two days where we've got the three and six, and then nine additional days where we are using seven. Let's have a look at one more. Okay, so lots of words again. It takes five workers, 14 days to complete a job. On the first day, there are two workers on the job, four on the second day, eight on the third day, and seven for the remaining days. How many days in total does it take to complete the job? Well, again, from that first line, if it takes five workers, 14 days, let's work out one worker. So five times 14 is 70 days. So if we have one worker, it's gonna take 70 days. Now let's have a look at what we've got on these next few days then. So on the first day, we have two workers on the job, so that's two days. On the second, we have four. And on the third, how many is it? Eight, 
8 on the third day. And then for the remaining days, this is 7. Now, if we tally all these up, let's have a look. 8 plus 4 plus 2 leaves us with 14 days that has been done already. So if we take away the 14 days of work that we've already had done, that's going to leave us with a total there of, take away the 10 is 60, take away the 4 is 56 days of work that needs to be done. Okay, so we're at this point now, we've got 56 days worth of work to be done. We've got seven workers that are going to be working those for those remaining days. So it's going to be seven times faster than if it was just one machine. And if we divide that by seven, it leaves us with eight days of work with the seven machines. Okay, so similar to before, don't, let's not forget we had the first day, the second day, the third day, plus these remaining eight days. So add three to that for those first three. And we have a total there of 11 days of work. And there's our final answer. Okay, so a little bit more of a problem there, but here's some for you to have a go at. So only two questions, okay? So have a go at these two, pause the video there, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Right, so the first one takes six machines, 10 days. So six times 10 gives us 60 days. And then let's have a look at what's being completed on the following day. So we've got five machines on the first day, and on the second day there are seven. So five add seven means we've done 12 days of work. So take away the 12 from there, and that leaves us with 48 days left to do. There we go. Uh, we've got 48 days left to do, and we've got four machines doing that. So let's divide that by four, and that leaves us with 12 days there we go don't forget though we've got the first two days there so we've got 12 days plus the initial two days and that leaves us with 14 days in total so we've got 14 days there right let's have a look at the next one so it takes eight workers 12 days so let's work out one worker so eight times 12 leaves us with 96 so that's 96 days let's have a look at then what's being done on those following days so on the first day there's three uh, on, the, on the next day there's 5 and on the next day there's 8. So if we add those all up, they're all only one day, so 3 plus 5 plus 8. And that leaves us with 16 days of work that have been done. So 96, let's take away the 16 that's already been done. And that leaves us with 80 days worth of work left to do. So 80 days. It says 5 for the remaining days. Okay, So 5 workers for the remaining days, it's going to be 5 times faster than that. So divide by 5 and that leaves us with 16 days. There we go, 80 divided by five. But let's not forget we also had the initial three days, so add three to that, and that leaves us with 19 days in total. Okay, there we go, so 19. Okay, so that's some inverse proportion in context. Obviously there's a lot of words there, it does tend to throw people this topic, but obviously you can always rewind, have another go, have another listen, uh, and just try and get your head around this topic here. Okay, and the next video we're gonna have a look at the algebraic form of this, where we look at direct and inverse proportion, but that is uh, some inverse proportion in context, okay? So there we go. Uh, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I will see you for the next video.